Mother's Day and welcome you to this time with Rivers of Living Water. Apostle Dr. Robert L. Jones will be bringing the message with us in just a few minutes, but before he comes, I would like to read Proverbs 31, verses 30 and 31. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works be praised her in the gates. Now we'll have Mother Jones come with the scriptures. I'm reading from Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 10 through 19. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instru instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Notwithstanding ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desired a gift, but I desired fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Athenonius the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. But my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The key verse today is, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Now, Apostle Robert Jones. Thank you, Pastor Joyce. right into the word of God. We are so thankful to be able to share with you and we're so happy that you listen to us and follow us uh, on YouTube and or Facebook. My godly achievement through his anointing is the subject of today's lesson. My godly achievement through his anointing. A familiar verse, and certainly we're taking this lesson out of uh, Philippians, the fourth chapter, and uh, Pastor Joyce did uh, read um, from Philippians 4, verses 10 through 19, 
with a key verse of, of, of emphasis being on verse number 13. So verse number 13, a familiar verse that is too often wrongly used, says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, this is a very true declaration. But again, let me tell you this. Because the Bible says it doesn't mean everyone can use that. Use that verse. I can do all things through Christ as a true declaration. But just anyone cannot use this verse and receive God's support for, uh, let's say, their doings. One's doings. Many times their doings are wrong. God will not be a partner in partnership with what is wrong. So to say, I can do all things and try to invoke his presence into your own ways and your own lifestyles and things that's certainly against the word of God. You cannot use that verse. Even if you are Christian and you are engaging in something that's not becoming of holiness, you really can't use that verse expecting God to be in partnership with you. God will not give his support to be engaged with anything that does not reflect his character, his holiness, his righteousness. I spoke last week on um, some verses that's reserved only for those who are in the will of God, doing the work of God, beloved of God, called to be saints, and in the purpose of God. So again, I'm saying this week, just because a verse is in the Bible doesn't mean that you can use that verse if you are not doing the things that, that reflects the nature, the call, the, the, the character of God. Hallelujah. So... Some people so ignorantly try to use God's precious word to support them in their wrong deeds. I know I've been there where I was doing something that wasn't godly as a born again person of God in the family. For example, I told this story, it's a very true story. I was speeding, I was speeding on my way to do something wonderful, on my way to do something good, but one day I was speeding and as I was speeding, I was praying that God would not that I would not get caught and God would blind the eyes of the state patrol, state trooper. And oh, I was very sincere in my prayer. Lord, I pray, blind the eyes of those police or the troopers so they will not see me speeding. Oh, what a most powerful prayer. I was praying as I was breaking the law. And then all of a sudden, 
In my spirit, I heard the Spirit speak to me and say, <laughs> I hope you get caught. Here you are breaking the law and want me to engage in your law breaking. You want me to give you strength to break the law. Then he says to me again, I hope you get caught. Mm. <laughs> he says, I will not be a partner with you in that deed of law breaking. I hope you get caught. Man, you should have. Seen me quickly easing off the gas pedal. You see, out of that, I learned that although I was on my way to do something good, I was doing something bad in breaking the law by speeding and trying to engage the blessings and the support of God in my wrong behavior at that time, even as a child of God. Hallelujah. Beloved of God, I was doing something wrong, and I was trying to engage him in my wrong doing. You see, he was and is too holy, too righteous of a God to support me, though I'm one of his children, to support wrong doing, my wrong deeds and breaking. A good, a good law of the land meant to be there to protect myself, protect others, and to be at a very controlled speed where I would not bring harm to others. So I could not invoke Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ expecting the support of God to strengthen me in that by saying what the Bible says. Although the Bible says that, people, you can't use that for wrong doing. Let us also understand that when the Apostle Paul said this or those words, to the church at Philippi, he was speaking to the church. When he said, I can do all things to Christ, he was talking to believers. He was talking to the church. He says to the believers, believers, church, church, of Philippi, you Philippians in the church, me as a man of God, engaged in the work and the will of the Lord, I can do whatever the work of God might be, no matter how difficult the task is, I can do it through the anointing of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, do not forget that through Christ Jesus, he was simply saying through the anointing. I can do this through the anointing. Now the anointing is going to 
give you the ability to do godly kinds of things. Imagine a liar wanting to invoke the strength of God to be a better liar. Think God's going to engage in that behavior? No. Imagine one that is you're legally drug dealing, selling drugs, and I can do all things through Christ who's good to me. God's not involved in that. He's not giving you the strength. You are taking chances, and it is your own underworld gods of this world that is enabling you to do the kind of bad behavior that you might be involved in, not Yahweh God. So there are certain verses that cannot be used to try to invoke the help of God. Hallelujah. So Paul is speaking to the Philippians, to the believers, when he says, I can do all things pertaining to the call, the will, the work, the purpose of God who strengthens me through the anointing. And we know the name of Christ means what? The anointing or the anointed one. Well, let's go even beyond that. Not only was Paul referring, uh, was, was uh, referencing Christ, the head of the church, but also the body of Christ, the anointed believers of the church. So if the head, Jesus Christ, is anointed, certainly the body of Jesus Christ carries the anointing carries the abilities of God. Hallelujah. So again, not only was Paul referencing the head, Jesus Christ, but remember the church of the body of Christ is seated together with the head, Jesus, the scriptures tells us in Ephesians, in heavenly places. So we become one with Christ. So the head is anointed. Jesus and his body carries, hallelujah, the same anointing. Glory to God. So when Paul was saying, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, not only was he saying, Christ the head. But also, I'm getting strength from the body of Christ, who's hearing his voice, and who is hearing the needs that I have and are communicating with me. So, doing all things to Christ also includes the body of Christ. So the body of Christ is who and what also helps me to achieve, to be able to do the things of the Lord. Paul was declaring that with the support of the whole body of Christ, I can accomplish anything pertaining, anything pertaining to the work and the purpose of the Lord. Recall in verse number 10 that was read by Pastor Joyce on today, 
where he says, I rejoice in the Lord greatly that your care. He's talking to the church here. He's talking to the body. That your care for me in the work of the gospel has flourished again. And the body of the anointed one, I have your support again. You, the church, are giving me strength to carry on as the body of Christ with your help. I can continue. So when I talk about being able to do things through Christ, oh, you must understand you are included because who you are in Christ Jesus. In verse number 15, Paul talks about when he says, no church communicated with me concerning my needs and financial aid and gifts and things that I needed, but only you. So every church may be a church, but may not necessarily be listening to the head of the church, Christ, the anointed one, and becoming the anointing body that is hearing what it must do to support the work of the ministry. But Paul says here to the Philippians, only you, the body of Christ, supported the things that I needed in the work that I'm called. You see, the body of Christ knows the voice of the head of the body and will do what the head dictates. Amen? Because it is part of the body. So as the anointed head is dictating, the anointed body is complying to the things that the head is directing. In verse number 16, he says, the body, the anointed of Christ, the word says, sent once and also again unto my necessity. Verse number 18, he says, I have received the things which were sent from you that I may uh, involve myself in the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ through you helping and your concern for me. I am confident that my God shall supply whatever my need might be according to his, 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 his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now I need to talk about his riches in glory. Well, part of God's riches and glory happens to be the church, the believers that he works through. You are some of his riches, glory to God, in glory. Since Christ Jesus, since we are the body of Christ Jesus and Christ and through Christ, we have what? Been glorified. 
then we become part of the glory, part of his riches, to do the things that God wants. He calls people that hears his voice. They comply. Because as Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I want to remind you that you are part of Christ, the anointing of the anointed one that God uses to bring whatever is needed to the body. Isn't that great to know that you are really Part of God's riches through Christ. Ooh, that's my brother. Oh, that makes me happy. As poor as you might seem and think yourself to be, knowing that you are part of God's riches in support of the work and the things of God. Isn't it marvelous to know the anointing through Christ Jesus that also rests on you to do the work and support of ministry? Isn't that marvelous? Isn't it wonderful to know that you are some of the riches in glory in Christ Jesus that God uses for the strengthening of those who are called to do whatever the task might be? Isn't that wonderful to know that? Take another look at who you are in Christ Jesus. You're, you are part of the riches that God uses. Glory to God. I remember when my wife and I was shepherding a young church in Sandusky and Lord, the Lord would send riches to us and we were somewhat a little young to understand the type of riches that he was sending but there were ladies that was coming from Cleveland to support the work. They didn't want anything but they would come and they would financially support the work that was part of the hallelujah part of his riches unto us that he sent to support the work. They would come from Cleveland and perhaps it was no sacrifice to them because they were in the will of God doing what God told them to do for the purpose and the support of ministry because some of those that even sent us to Sandusky was not supporting us. But God raised up people that did not know us. That was a part of the body, a part of the anointing that heard his voice and would drive down from Cleveland to be a support to that young work of that ministry that the Lord had called us into. Isn't it great to know that God is depending on you, the body of Christ, to hear his voice and to be dispatched to wherever and wherever and whatever you are called to, where you're called to go and to do what you're called to do to be of support or to be of aid that you are a part of those riches hallelujah that God is using to support 
those that's in the work of the ministry. Oh my God. Isn't that great to know? As I'm closing out this morning, let me ask you another. Isn't it divine to know that you can be a strengthening source through your obedience to God through Christ Jesus, helping others to be able to do all of the things through Christ since you are part of the effectual working of his body. Isn't that divine to know? So when I say that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, I now see much more in that verse than just trying to peek up and see what's going to fall. I can look around me and see who's who in Christ Jesus. Isn't that divine? So I know these that are of the body of Christ is not going to be supporting that that are wrong deeds and though that that doesn't bring glory to the image of God. I can see the kinds of parts and pieces of his glory. <coughs> the few people that in the sanctuary today, I see you much differently now than just Sister Brenda. I see Sister Brenda now as part of the riches of God. see Jermaine differently. Part of the riches that God uses in support of the ministry of Jesus Christ. I see Evangelist Cruz much differently in him dwells much of the riches that God was using to support other ministers and ministries and works of the body of Jesus Christ. I can do it. Do what? All things. Through the support. Jesus Christ. And I know that they will not, his body is not engaged in helping me to do anything that does not reflect the things of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. I trust this message speaks to you on the day and that revelation of who and what the body of Christ is and the riches that they have that's a part of who Christ is. It's been put in our hands to help in ministry. God, I pray for these under the sound of my voice today that they too see who they are as a part of the riches that God uses to support people, to strengthen them as they endeavor to do the things pertaining to the gospel. In 
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you enjoyed this message today and view us on Facebook, friend us. If you view us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel and you'll get notifications when we post. Anyone that would like a prayer cloth or has a prayer request that you would like placed on a prayer cross, please contact us at Post Office Box 1323, Fremont, Ohio, 43420. We look forward to hearing from you. Remember, there is no God like our God nowhere.